good morning or whatever time you're watching this so I <laughs> as classical as usual I have only given myself a week to now make my 4th of July or Independence Day dress for a museum event I am supposed to be at on July 1st not even the 4th um, I don't know why they couldn't at least do it on Sunday because that would at least be the second a little closer and would give me another day <laughs> so I literally it's it is Saturday and the event is next Saturday so yes as classical as usual I've given myself a week to finish a dress and I am a little concerned because some of the reason this got put off so much was because I was supposed to be getting a certain color of taffeta in the mail it did not arrive oh, well no they sent me a yard I was supposed to get three yards so I only have a yard of it I don't know when the other three are coming they're kind of slow to ship sometimes so hopefully it arrives or that one yard makes me through everything I needed to get through but yes, that's right. This is a 100% silk dress, which as always with silk makes me super nervous. Um, this is only like, I just, ha I don't work with, I have not worked with silk much in the past. I have been collecting it very slowly over the year for some reason, because I'm been crazy. But um, I have sort of started working on a bustle dress that is also going to be 100% silk, but you're not going to get to see that until after this dress, because <laughs> it's on hiatus right now. It's halfway done, but you will see that sometime throughout the month. But yeah, um, so essentially I'm going to go with the 1888 silhouette, specifically the evening dress silhouette. I've seen a lot of actual examples in the museums and everything where you can see here it has uh, just a very typical underskirt, whether it be a foregore or a foundation, I'm not sure. And then it had the overskirt is sort of, um, it's not bustled, it's just like a cape over skirt I guess where basically it seems to start at the hip line and then go out back that's it so you see the front and then the hip line um, I I wish I could give myself a bit of a train on this dress I think it would look pretty but it probably would be really dirty I may still do it and what I might do because I know a lot of times these dresses have it seems the underskirt and overskirt built in to the same waistband but I might actually incorporate them separately into two different waistbands so that I can just wash the overskirt that would have a slight train because I will be outside. Um, but I would think it would look pretty especially with the design I have in mind. Then for the bodice I would like to do like a overlap bodice. Um, that way I could have a bi-collar bodice. Um, so yes, essentially the goal here is to make something that is Victorian and that makes me look like the American flag. Why? Because it's Independence Day! Hey! And that's probably when you guys are gonna get to see the video. Mm -hmm. And now let's talk about the fabrics. So this is the white taffeta I only have a yard of for now. Hopefully, oh yes, very nice sound. And um, hopefully we'll get enough or this will be enough by the time we need it. So obviously I'll have to put the bodice aside. Here is our very lovely rich blue. And it is so beautiful. It's really nice. This is also taffeta. And then finally, the centerpiece in my opinion of the dress, which is this fabric, which is was so hard to find, but I knew what I wanted, which is basically a red with satin ribbon stripes through it and a taffeta. I think I really like the color scheme because it's very antique looking like we don't have pure whites on here. It's a darker red, a darker blue. So I think it'll look really good and making the underskirt and the overskirt separate pieces mean I can totally incorporate this with green for Christmas. Whoa! So basically what I want to do now is as boring as it sounds, we're gonna start with the skirts because, oh yeah, I don't have enough white taffeta, so I'm kind of just, um, 
biding my time. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be using my usual go-to for my underskirts because I just don't have enough time to draft up anything new, which is truly Victorian's four core underskirt. You guys have seen me now make this a million times. I will have a card up there where I have a whole video just really going into how to do this. Um, so I'm just gonna speed run and you guys are gonna just watch me make this really, really fast. <laughs> okay, let's go. Oh yeah, listen to that taffeta crispness. Mmm. Okay, I'm over it. <laughs> Sorry to make you all suffer. Aesthetic cutting sounds. And now you can listen to the sound of cutting taffeta without having the heartache of your wallet as you fear you may make a mistake. You're welcome. Here I'm demonstrating that we're going to be doing French seams on everything. Except I'm not really demonstrating it. You're on my seat! What are you doing? Newest addition to the house here. And the last cat fur baby edition. Yeah. But you're only three months old, right? Not even three months yet. <laughs> Look at tiny Thank you, mommy needed that seat. So, uh, my recording got messed up that it had me talking over what I'm doing here, but I'm taking the same pattern I used for the underskirt, and I'm just figuring out where I want to cut the sides, because I don't want it to be that long. And then here I'm showcasing how I'm, I'm determining how long to make the train, which I kind of wish I'd made longer, but oh well. Okay, so what I was trying to show you guys was how I was figuring out how long I wanted it. So basically at the very center back, so this is our fold here, I want the extent of my um, wow my mind's gone blank uh, of my train to be about 10 inches. So I'm just going to mark that. And this is why it's important that we're actually for this piece going to cut out the back first because I need to have it gradually coming smaller and smaller. So here I'll do about 10 though, because the piece itself, as you can see, has a curve to it. And then about, we'll say nine and a half, then to nine, and then to eight. You know, just how, but however you feel it would naturally flow. And then at the very end of my large piece, I think I'll have it at seven. So I've marked those and I'm making a very rough line with chalk. And there's our back piece, which now means that I know for the side front piece that we're shortening that I need to start at a probably about six and a half to six for the gradual length. So, uh, well actually I'll probably have to start it at seven and then gradually get it smaller. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out this piece and we'll move to the next. And uh, so this is where it connects to the back piece. This is our side front. Remember I said I had to start at seven. And I hope that this footage is bright enough for you guys. It is a really, really overcast day. <laughs> Just super duper overcast. Uh, so I'm trying to get some extra lighting in here to kind of get things a little better. So again, I'm just kind of going off of my personal experiences and under trying to, you know, understanding the train. Remember, we're going to lose probably an inch at the bottom here, 
because we because I want to finish this off without using the serger to make it a little more historically accurate. So I double roll um, my edge, um, my hems, blah, 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 uh, which means I probably will lose about, like I said, you know, um, it would not surprise me if I lose an inch. Okay, sorry for the weird angle. <laughs> so we've got our overskirt done. Now it is time to embroider some stars along the base. So I've gone ahead and I have bought a star embroidery pattern. So I'm gonna mark out where I want it because I don't have time to do it on a separate piece of fabric and then transfer it over. So yeah. So this is the back of my fabric and I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of figure mark out with some chalk where I want my stars to be. I think I want one like at the like top in the center sort of like I'll put one here and then kind of have it cascading down and around. everyone so I've got it in the machine I've adjusted the star because obviously with the embroidery machine it's going to want to put the star in the middle of where that hoop is and my star I want a little lower I'm not really gonna get into too much of the mechanics of this embroidery machine I am embarrassed to say I've owned it probably over a year now and I've used it this will be the fifth time <laughs> um, I'm one of these people that I love getting new and advanced equipment, but it, it's like so scary breaking the water or the ice sometimes with it. Not that it's even that hard to use. I mean, like this is a totally bought um, embroidery design that I was able to upload onto the machine. Um, and I'm really glad that I got this machine. I got very lucky that brother was like, yeah, we don't want it. We, we're like getting new machines. So I got it for a pretty good deal. but. I'm not gonna go into a whole bunch about it because I'm still kind of learning the machine myself and I know this is exactly how you are not supposed to embroider because really I should be embroidering these designs on like a matching blue organza or something and then cutting around it and hand sewing it on to the dress. But I've done some testing with the taffeta. I think it'll hold up well enough, especially with the stabilizer in the back that it shouldn't pucker it too much. So I just don't have enough time. I'm just gonna be completely honest. I just don't have enough time to do it the right way. And what we're gonna do after this is once I get that done, well probably while it's actually doing all the stars because each star is going to take 11 minutes. <laughs> um, I will probably go ahead and start setting up a nice cotton, a matching blue cotton lining for this overskirt to attach to it and then it'll also help make it easier to clean and also cover up all the ugly stitches on the inside. So yeah, <laughs> um, I guess if I also have some more time after this we can start talking about the bodice because my plans for that have changed. So. I guess let's go ahead and get this machine going and embroidery while I make the lining. You, I'm not going to force you guys to watch me do the lining. There's nothing new about that. So. <laughs>
Okay everyone, so while the embroidery machine is working its butt off to putting on the stars, it's time for us to start on the bodice. Which, as very classic to me, I could not settle on a design. I had a few ideas, but I didn't, I just never really liked any of them. But I finally found a dress that is actually up for auction on Etsy, so it's from the 1880s. It's more of a like teenager's dress, but meh. It has like that two-way look to it where it has something that overlaps on another color. And that's really what I was thinking about doing, but I couldn't figure out in my head how I was going to go about it. So I'm really glad I found this dress because I'm like, yes, we're going to mimic the way that design is. I'm actually going to work with a very different pattern today that I've had in my stash but haven't done anything with, which is uh, Butterick 6400, which is basically um, Victor like 1880s style bodices. Now the reason I'm going with this design is on C, I really like the back because it has like the folding and the two points, which was another design that I saw in one of my books where it had like in the book it was much more dramatic point but I really liked having that too where it has these two tails on the back of the bodice basically so I'm incorporating everything I wanted in my design um, so yeah we will be uh, doing butter 6400 option C and here you can see what I'm talking about with that back design see how it has the nice pleats and then two little tails I just think that's and then that'll be absolutely perfect for the look I wanted to go for. Uh, as far as the front, we're going to have to discuss basically doing some alterations and probably doing some draping on the mannequin to figure out how to get the look of that bodice on Etsy. Alright everyone, so this is probably going to be the part of the bodice that I really need to go over because it's not going to be covered in any pattern, which is the right the right front side. <laughs> and as you saw earlier, that was the part that I draped the blue to kind of over my, um, uh, what do you call it, <laughs> my mock-up piece. So this is the real, um, this is the real uh, white taffeta. This taffeta I have actually uh, is from Silk Baron and it's, it's actually got a bit of texture to it, which at the time I made a mistake when I bought it, but now I'm like, I kind of like it for this project, but I'm going off the rails here. So I have basted the right front side, the normal right front side onto, I haven't basted it. Yeah, I have basted it. Oh my God, what's wrong with me? Okay, I flat lined it to a cotton lining which I will be doing with all my pieces which is mostly historically accurate they would have probably used linen but that's okay so now what I want to do is we now need to baste parts of the blue just parts which is mostly the um, the side right here uh, if you look at the original picture of the actual extant garment that I'm mimicking, you can see that even though the piece that is draped on the side is, you know, in this odd drape and everything, it is connected to something solid because it's darted. Because as you saw, because probably when you guys were watching me drape it, it looked a bit chunky and weird. Well, to get rid of that, we are going to still be doing the side darts. This is going to be very interesting, but yes, yeah, so essentially I am only basting this to the other front at the top of the arm side, and we're gonna go all the way down and down the side because I don't wanna do the top yet because I'm gonna have to pleat that in position. And then from there, we can put in our darts as normal, making sure we get all three layers which will be a little complicated. I'm gonna have to really make sure that I'm grabbing all three layers up. 
mainly this one because it's going to be loose at the bottom still. So that's what we're doing. All right, everyone, so you can see we've got her pinned up. Um, and as you can tell, the darts did make it so it's actually form-fitting now. Um, basically, I'm now going to go ahead and replete it at the top over here. I don't know if you can see them. I do have some chalk lines to help me kind of decipher where that needs to go. So once I get it pleated, I'll baste it and then we'll be working on getting the sash and then that angular cut that the other side has. All right, so there's how it looks kind of far away. Let's zoom up. So I've done tighter pleats this time because I think that looks fancier. Most of them do just kind of dissolve as we go through the bodice. And then I've also gone ahead and basted the big pleats and made it all the way down so that I can sew it along here. And this, one's act this first one's actually uh, basted to the white front. I feel I, I feel like I'm gonna really like it I just don't know if I'm gonna like it on me <laughs> but it does look a lot like the original one and I don't know why it's really I think it was I think it's personally very fitting because it's really giving me Statue of Liberty vibes <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and sew where I've basted the top and the bottom okay so now we're on to the back um, they start pretty early on in the instructions of Butterick's pattern uh, preparing the backs, which is nice, so it wasn't too hard to find. Actually, just looking over this pattern, it looks fairly historically accurate for a bodice. I mean, they talk about um, a flat, well, they don't talk about flat lining, but they do talk about the similar stuff like underlining and stuff. And the other thing that's not accurate is they want you to interface, uh, no. <laughs> I no, <laughs> but yeah so uh, over here I have my pattern pieces um, that they have been flatlined with their uh, you know coordinating blue cotton okay let's see. so it looks like we'll take the back stitch sections together base center back edges along seam lines and fold lines stitch center back seam leaving open below large circle pleat stitch pleat edges together okay um yeah gonna be honest uh the pattern pro probably the instructions aren't going to be super duper helpful so let's go to the pattern so this is my back i have the two pieces separate <laughs> so essentially it just looks like what we'll do is sew it and all the way up down the back until here and I'll just do a reinforcing stitch and then this is the section that I'll get pleated. I should have just explained it that way and try to instead of trying to go and read the boring instructions. <laughs> Once you do up the back, you're also going to do up that odd section there where it connects with the pleat and then you're going to draw the fold lines or the pleat lines. And here you can see I'm kind of testing out if that's actually how it works. After that I also uh, sewed up the side um, to the back. So the side back to the back section.
And here we can fully get all the pleats positioned. And this just took a really long time until you kind of figure out how it's supposed to work, but the instructions weren't exactly great, which surprise, surprise, right? But it does look good. Once you have all of that done, you're going to press your seams open because we have to prep them for putting in our boning casing. Again, the pattern left no instructions on this. I couldn't find anywhere, so I just had to base it off of experience and how the picture looked as to how long the boning is. Yes, it's very strange colored because I am using up my excess bias tape collection to make my boning casing. Now this is the part that was very confusing to me when I first got into this, which was how to put boning casing in and have it hidden. So what I'm trying to show you guys is that you, you sew it to that seam allowance on either side. And I hope that makes sense, but that essentially keeps it hidden so you don't see it on the outside. Is it a little tedious to sew? A little, but it just make sure you have enough seam allowance and then you put your boning in and we're almost done after that I just got to put all the fastenings on everything which I prefer hook and bar closures and that's it we are ready almost for the reveal